Ladies and gents, hello and welcome to ROG Pulse, the weekly show where we dive into all things tech and gaming. My name is still Jake. This is still Whitson. What's up, man? How you doing? The shadows. You know, there are worse out... I, I mean, that's kind of cool, actually. Maybe you are streaming by candlelight. You were muted. He, I'm the worst. I've got a, I've got two mutes things where I can hear you and stream can hear you. He's he blew a breaker. That's why he's streaming in 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 the darkness. That's why I'm in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah the you, electrician's coming after the show to fix. He's all of he's my always house. got someone at his house doing something like repairing a fridge, reinstalling floors. Your house is cursed. I think you just need to find a new one. My wife thinks it's haunted. It might be. It might be. We'll see. Do you see any, many goats around? Not ghosts, goats. <laughs> yeah, a lot of goats. Mm. No, but our neighborhood is run by a gang of angry skunks. Oh. Yeah. I learned so much about San Diego that I never knew. Haunted by goats and... Skunk, skunk ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we, we, are, we are doing a bit of a, a recap on Computex 2023, which, which is... I, I Did it end today? Or it's like uh, wrap it up? Well... <laughs> It's it technically it ended because it's yeah it it's Friday no it's Friday somewhere night in Taiwan right now no it's Friday hard. morning uh, three a.m. it's three a.m. It's Friday Taiwan. morning so there's one more day then <laughs> okay there's okay. one more day yeah it's hard because yeah. it's not our calendar it's theirs it's happening in Taiwan this is when all the PC companies come and announce all of their newest stuff and show stuff off we got allies on display there it's pretty cool Jake's got one right there but we announced some new products. But before we get in there, you mentioned the ally. I just want to, I want to plug this tomorrow. We're, we're doing a, a several hour. It'll probably be around five hour long ally stream where I am going to game in one seamless session with the ally in a variety of ways. So I'll game with it handheld. I'll game with it docked to the XG mobile. This is the 4090 XG mobile plugged into the PG32 UQ, which is, or sorry, PG42 UQ, which is our OLED display. Um, and and uh, I'm actually going to do mouse and keyboard routed to my my regular display, just kind of treating it like a desktop, treating it like a PC, because guess what? It's Windows. And you know what? We might even get spicy, and I might just go lay on the couch and play some games on the couch, because Dude, why not? It's going to be a good stream. It's going to be, a, and it's all going to be... I want to see, either it's going to go really smooth and be an awesome demo, or it's going to go totally awry and still be an awesome demo but hilarious. I have so been, I'm here for it either way. Uh, yeah. And I think it's going to be good. I've been putting in a lot of time and effort into like fine tuning all these different settings and uh, scenarios, but it's going to be Diablo four. Um, Diablo four launches in four hours, early access. If you bought the early access, Ooh. it launches in four hours. So um, I'll be starting an ally game. Yeah, it really is. It runs great in all these situations. Mouse keyboard is my preferred, but I'd actually, um, most of my game time has been on the ally with it, with that game. So that's been handheld and it just feels great. So l looking forward to that. That's going to be on Twitch only. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, that is going to be on twitch.tv slash Asus ROG. But let us dive into um, our news. And we actually did a very short live stream on, I believe it was Monday. It was Memorial Day. We, we dove in and we unveiled the newest addition to the graphics cards family, the ROG Matrix 4090. Yes, yeah, so we won't talk about this a ton since we already talked about it a few days ago. You guys can go back and watch that video if you want. Also, we're going to have links to all of the announcements in the uh, description description yep. of this video. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, but this is the Matrix 4090. It is an all-metal frame, transparent shroud, super, super unique-looking graphics card, that awesome RGB glow. It is liquid-cooled. It has liquid metal on the chip. And most importantly, it is the best 4090 you can get it has the fastest boost clocks of mm. any 4090 out there we have binned these chips to be only the best of the best of the best and that is what you get when you get this card it is quite a beauty this is a showpiece card if i ever seen one i know that you wrote this article when it says heavy metal as a headline actually lane wrote that <laughs> really okay um yeah I'm shocked. <laughs> I have been right. I have been writing exclusively ROG Ally stuff. Yeah. So Lane has written everything else because oh, I'm cool. just knee deep in uh, testing games for the Ally, writing how to guides for the Ally, aiming to try and get those up next week, if not, hopefully soon after. Because um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming. 
So the RG Matrix, like the, the previous Matrix cards we've had, these are very limited quantity. We, we don't have an exact number. We don't have an exact price for you yet. That information is coming soon. But these are indeed like collector's items. So they just don't expect yeah. to see them at your local store. That's not going to be a thing. These are going to be yeah. far and few. Um, yep. Uh, no pricing or availability on anything we talk about today yeah. yet. Not yet. Um, but Keep and it's going to vary region to region, even when that information starts to come does. out. But um, just got to reiterate it and and uh, make the statement. But moving on to our next announcement, we do have the, the problem. You know, honestly, with all these things, this is one of the things I'm most excited about because I'm a numpad warrior. I'd like my keyboard to take up less space if, space if it could. And here we go. Here's the answer. This is really cool. I like this a lot. So. I know some people, I'm not a numpad guy, but I know some people like you and like Lane are numpad people. This gives you the benefits of a more compact keyboard. So you have more room for your mouse hand on the right side, which is important, particularly for gaming. Uh, ergonomically, it's just superior. But you get to keep the numpad and you g instead get rid of that middle block of keys that's like insert, page up, page down, home. I yeah, I hate like, that block. This is my yeah. ideal keyboard. It really is. So in that way, you get the benefits of a compact keyboard while still keeping your beloved numpad. Um, the, the form factors really is what what is unique here, but it also has hot swappable switches, so you mm -hmm. can swap in any switches you want. And uh, it actually comes with a new switch um, that we developed. It is a, a preloop switch called the ROG NX Snow. So it is um, it's linear. It's similar to Reds, uh, but it's its custom actuation curve is a little bit different than reds. They 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 have a little bit lighter um, total force, and it's that that stem design with kind of the box around it, which protects it from like dust and things like that uh, intrusion into the switch. So it's it's a nice upgrade for fans of linear switches. Um, but of course, you can swap those out and pop in whatever switch you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got on-the-fly macro recording, all the gaming features you'd expect. We've got that multi-wheel on the side with customizable functions. And, of course, you have AuraSync RGB that you can sync up with all of your other ROG gear. Can we just rest. take a minute to appreciate that space bar? It's so gorgeous. I love that space bar. It's real nice. Yeah. And, of course, the space bar and the shift keys and all that also have our ROG stabilizers on them, yep. which I also really, really like. They're super, super stable and smooth. Um and not something like, I don't know what magic they did to develop those, but I actually find that my ROG, like my the big keys on my ROG keyboards are more stable than most of my other keyboards. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I no, that's great. Keyboards. I just love how there's like no negative space at all here. All the space is used. It's all meaningful. There's no fat. A lot no of keyboards, even even what I'm using right now with the Flare 2 Animate, it's because it has the anime matrix, but there's like this like added depth to it on the top of the keyboard. It's a little bit taller. It's not something that I'm super fond of because I don't really want that space. I like how tight this is. And I'm serious when I say this is my ideal keyboard. I cannot wait to get my hands on one. Um, soon, yeah. TM, hopefully. We don't know. Soon. We don't. We, but, don't, uh, we don't know what the date we, is. Yeah, but, we literally don't. <laughs> but we know I'm, Jake will hopefully get one before everyone else does so he can start playing with it and showing it off and giving feedback. Yeah, hopefully. We can dream. Um, we okay, can dream. well, you know, a lot of people have been really hyped up about um, the, the developments of the ROG OLED displays. We've, we've uh, you know, of release, we announced, announced a few earlier this year in January. We obviously announced the 42 and the 48 inch last year. We have the 48 right next, 42 right next to me. And now we're going ultra wide. Super ultra wide. This is a 49 inch UD OLED monitor. This thing is super cool. So, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with the ultra wide monitors. Those are 21 by 9, right? It's like a monitor and a half in width. This is a 32 by 9, right? So, it's a 49 inch. It's basically like having two 1440p monitors next to each other for a total of 5120 by 1440 resolution. That's really cool because obviously you get more on your periphery for gaming. It's really cool for like racing games and stuff mm. like that where or you're doing a racing sim. Um, but the other thing that it's cool for is that because it has a smart KVM built in, you hook up your mouse and keyboard to the monitor and then you can actually run two PCs on the monitor at once. One PC on the left half of the monitor and one PC on the right half of the monitor. It's like dual monitors built into one monitor and you control them both with the same mouse and keyboard that you have plugged into the display. So it's really cool if you, for example, are a streamer and you've mm -hmm. got a streaming PC and a regular PC and you got to manage that. Or if you, um, like in my old job, I had to have multiple PCs for testing stuff. 
Um, really cool for, for situations like that where you want to work with multiple devices. Um, and because it's an OLED, we built in our you know really large heat sink on the back. It's got a graphene film for the same great cooling that we have on our other OLEDs, but that allows it to have higher brightness uh, with better longevity than a lot of the other OLEDs you see out there. It also allows for our uniform brightness feature. So I, I don't know if you guys know how this works on OLEDs. Um, because OLEDs uh, aren't always able to get as bright and are trying to protect themselves for longevity purposes and all of these things, um, if you took a standard OLED, not one of our OLEDs, but like a regular OLED TV, and you um, opened up a file explorer window and you resize it so that white square is taking up more or less of the screen, the, the more of the screen has like a, a high brightness, that starts to dim. So like if you're zooming in on like a white, whatever and it's starting to fill the screen in the game it'll actually dim as it gets larger and it's kind of this distracting thing our oleds don't suffer from this as much because we have this uniform brightness feature that keeps the brightness uniform as the size of the object grows um that's something else that we were able to do which is really nice for gaming watching hmm. movies things like that um because you don't have that kind of distractive auto dimming in the back um so yeah that's that's really nice and the other cool thing is that uh, while you can customize the display via like the you know little buttons on the side and stuff, we also have a a new program called the Asus Display Widget Center, um, and that allows you to adjust like brightness and contrast and all of those kinds of settings from your PC with your mouse and keyboard rather than having to like mess with the buttons on the side, uh, which isn't always quite as smooth as just being able to click 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 done. Mm -hmm. So lot of really really interesting features on this i am super excited i hope i get to see it in person at some point because yeah these 49 inch monitors are the bee's knees have you ever used one no but i'm just dreaming of this right now it's They're so crazy oh man. crazy wide i mean look at that thing yeah you can you can tell from the picture how uh how super wide it is i'm literally just like Thinking about how nice it would look right here. Jake's just dreaming. <sighs> uh, yeah, just dreaming. I, I, I was never super sold on the ultra wides until I, I, I was actually looking at them at, 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 at uh, we were at the store in Taiwan. We went to like the this tech mall and they had a million oh, yeah. different stores. There was an RG store and everybody else. And I was just looking at all the different displays and different, different stuff. And it's like, ah, oh, that would be pretty nice. I can see the appeal. I think that, like you said, this would be cool for streamers having the KVM built in. Um, like I actually have a KVM actively on my other setup over there because I swap between, you know, even just using a laptop and a desktop. And, um, yep. but, but in this setup, you know, a lot of streamers do have their encoding PC and their gaming PC. Um, and having that all built into one one system would be would be pretty darn cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, it's gorgeous. It's the ability to switch back and forth, right? Because if you yeah. have dual monitors, like I run dual monitors, I've run dual monitors for years, and it's really nice when you know that you always want to have it split between the two PCs or the two whatever. But then when you want to game, you want that immersiveness of having it all having the as much space as possible devoted to the game this really gives you the best of both worlds because you can split it between two pcs when you need it or you can put one pc on the entire monitor when you want that full surround experience yeah since i've never used this i'm not even really sure if i wanted to treat it like two separate displays and have it cut down the middle does that work too just for one pc uh i don't believe so i've okay. never actually tried that um, I'm not sure what the benefit of doing that would be. Well, if I was it's streaming no and I wanted to stream in 16 by nine and just kind of have that 16 by nine oh, be on the I right, right. So that, so that's, so, four. no, that's probably something you would have to do in game. Like you would just have mm. to set the game to borderless okay. windowed and, and somehow scooch it or windowed mode and, and move it over most likely. I'm sure um, there's an option. I just didn't know if that was like a built in feature for these kind of displays in general. That I haven't thought of. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Just kind of thinking because so, I'm like, hmm, I kind of want this. <laughs> you can have everything you could do with it. So speaking of monitor tech, there was another announcement that NVIDIA made this week kind of in partnership with us. This is pretty cool. So uh, we now have a new version of NVIDIA's ultra low motion blur tech, ULMB2. Um, this is, uh, it's called, goes by a few names, backlight strobing, black frame insertion, whatever you want to call it. Um, they all work a little bit differently, but but what's cool about this, and this is really nerdy, so I'm going to try to avoid spending a half hour explaining how this works and just get to the good stuff. Um, 
ULMB2 uses the G-Sync processor in the display to calculate the best time to flash the backlight um, for the ideal motion clarity possible based on the position of the pixel scan out. Because the pixel, your, your monitor, you know, draws one line at a time, right? And if you flash the backlight at the wrong time, you're going to get a little bit more of that motion blur that you're trying to avoid with ULMB, right? Um, because if you don't have ULMB on, you get kind of this blurry effect from your eyes trying to track the moving object across the stream. When you have that backlight strobing, uh, it, it negates some of that effect of your eye trying to track it, um, gives your eyes a rest in between frames and uh, avoids some of the like response time motion blur that, that comes with um, those frames. So it's a really, really cool upgrade to this uh, ultra low motion blur tech, giving you just crazy image clarity, particularly for competitive games, uh, where you want to be able to see every single frame as clearly as possible. You also don't get as much like image doubling as you get on other versions of ultra low motion blur or or other competing solutions, um, competing backlight strobing solutions. So this is probably the best backlight strobing technology out there, brand new, and it is only it is only coming to two monitors so far, with wow. some more being added. But the first one is the ROG Swift 360 hertz uh, PG27 AQN. So if you have that monitor, you can download the firmware update, get that new ULMB2 tech, and try it out in your favorite competitive games. When coupled with that 360 hertz refresh rate, it's going to be the clearest image you've ever seen in a game. It's nuts. Truly nuts. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet indeed. Uh, okay, next... This like was sort of a Computex announcement, but not really. I wanted to bring it up. Um, we have announced Anime Matrix Sync. So just like Aura Sync, which syncs all of your RGB peripherals, so you can have these cool patterns that like sweep across your desk or, or, or just doing the same colors and patterns, you can now do that with the Anime Matrix. So if you have a Zephyrus M16 and a Delta S Animate headset, you can sync the animations between them. Or if you have a custom PC build with the Maximus Z790 Extreme, which has an Anime Matrix on it, and the ROG Ryuo 3, which mm -hmm. is the AIO cooler with the Anime Matrix on it, you can sync it all together. Cool feature. We've uh, added in a few different like presets for specifically for uh, syncing, syncing multiple devices together, and of course you can make your own stuff too, as always, uh, which is pretty cool. I the Anime Matrix is just so cool. I love to see that ecosystem grow, and I love that now you can do even cooler stuff with it. Yeah, this is actually something I've been wanting for a while because I have the Strix Flare Anime and I have the AIO, the Rio 3. So it'll be nice to be able to tie yeah, them together. Yeah, you got to try it out, man. I yeah. want to see what it can do. Yeah, we will definitely do that on stream soon. All right. Final piece of ROG Computex news is that there is a new ROG Saga short film out. We're actually starting to like dig into the story and like they're actually starting to release different chapters that will like string along into a story. This is the next chapter. We actually have another one coming soon this is not like it's not going to be like a year's break before you get another cool video like this so you can uh, head to the link in the description and check that out if you uh if you're into some of those videos that we've been putting out over the past few years yeah it's a lot of fun i still really like that music video that we did i think it was during the, the pandemic it was like this like electronic heavy metal right it was awesome yeah i think that, that was, was 2020 yeah yeah it was right before i started working here i think okay so that's all the ROG Computex news. There were a few other small things. Um, I think we showed off uh, a white version of the ROG Harp Ace mouse. Um, so if you were looking for a white version of that ultralight mouse that we announced at CES, that's coming. We, oh no, oh no, did stream die? Um, It looks like- Just my camera. Okay. No, yeah, it looks okay. like OBS is lagging randomly. That's really weird. Or maybe it's just your camera. I was only looking at your camera. It's possible um, just my yeah. camera. You might okay. have just been staying very still. Yeah, I'm good at um, that. We also showed off, I don't have a picture of this. We showed off this really cool GPU with no cables. It was like this kind of prototype concept thing. You would need a special motherboard and a special connector for it, but it was just something we wanted to like put together to show off because then you have a GPU with no need for power cables. Like it gets all of its power from the slot. Um, so there's, there's like some cool stuff like that we're showing off at Computex too. So um, go check out the news. It's it's out there. Uh, if you're in Taiwan, go check out our booth before it's over because we've got lots of fun stuff coming. 
and of course the ally. I know everyone in the chat's like, talk about the ally. I know, I know. People have been like, you know, ally news, ally stuff. Hang out tomorrow. We're going to be on the Twitch channel all day tomorrow playing Diablo and different setups. We're going to let you guys vote on different things. And uh, yeah, you'll get to... Not just tomorrow. Jake is here streaming on Twitch like four days a week. Yeah. Okay. And and for the next like month, it's just going to be ally. Like it's Pretty all much. ally all the time. So if you're looking for ally gameplay and ally discussion, like come follow our Twitch channel because it's happening all the time like almost every day actually i guess you're not on wednesdays lucky streams on wednesday yeah but tuesdays and fridays is all ally and when ally launches we're going to have a lot more ally content coming to pulse i'm furiously working on articles and how-to guides and stuff we're gonna have a guide on how to upgrade your ssd we're gonna have a guide on how to remap buttons all kinds of stuff we're gonna have optimized settings for a bunch of different games it's gonna be sweet but i'm just trying to get it all together Okay, well, you know, we've been talking about this, the stream plans for tomorrow and Diablo 4 is coming out in three and a half hours from now. Um, the reviews have started to, to come out and I think it's, it's we, can, we can actually say that Blizzard is at, back to their former glory, at least for Diablo, where they have truly, truly, truly put all the time in that, that, it, that is needed to make an incredible game. And... Um, you know, we're always reading about stories and we're always having these launches of games that come out where it's a shaky launch and it's not good. But Diablo feels perfect from the tests I've played and the reviewers that have been able to play through the entire game. Some of these reviewers are like, oh, I put in 100 and, and, and you know, 20 hours. It's like you had nine days to play the game and you just like no life it that hard. The fact that they were willing to even put in that much time. Yes, it's yeah. their job, but they're not required to play 120 hours in nine days. Um, yeah, that's, that's like that's like that's the stuff that gives me like so much hope that this is this is that action RPG that's going to pull you in and give you um a game to grind. And I don't know the last time I had a game where I was like, yeah, I want to grind this with my boys and just like sit down, schedule, schedule game night a few nights a week and just go ham. And Diablo four is going to be that. I'm excited. This is the Diablo that everyone has been waiting for. For a while. It is. It is. I mean, it's you know, like it, it's weird. Cause like I'm, I never played D2. Most of my friends played D2. I played D3 in college. A lot of people didn't like D3, but I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, Diablo 4 just, it feels a lot darker than Diablo 3. Like that nitty gritty, like, you know, demon slaying vibe heard. is there. But, um, you know, the combat feels better too. It just feels refined. And a lot of the reviews are basically just saying, like, they just took what Diablo is and they, they didn't do any kind of crazy innovation. They just perfected it. They just pushed mm -hmm. it forward. They said that the formula is already there. It's already good. They just made it better. Um, and you know, some people have been critical, like, oh, well, I want a class that really like is new and interesting and fresh and, and maybe we'll get that. Maybe they'll add classes to the game. We don't know yet, but, um, but yeah, it's no, one those things, I mean, you'll never please everyone, right? Some people want you to take, I mean, the same thing with music, like you, your favorite band comes out with a new album and you're like, I wanted you to turn it upside down and make something new. And other yeah. half people are like, no, I want the same thing, but better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's true. But yep. Yeah. So, Exciting stuff uh, with Diablo 4. Looking forward to playing a lot. Next on the list, we got the PlayStation Showcase, where we got to see um, quite yeah. a quite a bit of, of new stuff. Um, what I were you most... I didn't video in here. No, that's okay. We don't need to look the at videos. The... Yeah, we don't need to watch these videos right now. I think if people <laughs> saw it, then, then great. If they didn't see it, they can go check it out. Go um, watch it. PlayStation Showcase announced a bunch of stuff, um, in, including some some hardware from like earbuds to a, a handheld that is just streaming from your PlayStation to your PlayStation. So it's like it's not like an ally where it has native cool, gaming. It's, it's not just like the ally. you know, there's people that are gonna want that device that only own a PS5. They've never used a PC sure, before, sure. they have no Steam library. There are people that will love that device. But if you're a PC gamer, that device is absolutely irrelevant to you. And that is that. Um or an Xbox gamer. Or, or that too, yeah, because it's it literally requires you to already own a PS5, um, which is interesting. But anyways, um, it's an option. The, the PlayStation but Showcase was was pretty cool, and I wanted to ask you what the game got got you most hyped. I mean, Jake, you know the answer. To this I know, already. I know. The answer is so it's obvious. Obviously, Spider Man Two. Okay, I am. Yeah. So, it oh looks... my gosh, that. First of all, that was like 11 minutes of gameplay. I did I actually, not expect to see so that I much. So I actually shut it off halfway through because I'm like, okay, I'm I'm I already know I want to play this game and like I feel like I'm getting spoiled right now, so I'm I'm Yeah, just I didn't want to get spoiled. 
So usually I'm like not I like I don't like to watch movie trailers more than once. I almost never watch the final trailer because it starts giving away too much. And yeah. I almost felt that way during this gameplay trailer. And I'm glad that I watched the whole thing because I don't feel like it gave anything away. It just made me want to play it more. I already want like, to play it more. But what I did watch is I saw that, you know, you're you're playing as Peter Parker and something's going down. He's like, I can't get there fast enough. So he calls Miles and then you swap POVs and you play as immediately Miles. Immediately swap yeah, POVs. That it's is so cool. Sweet. Like so there, good. You have the other thing that I really liked is that you have Peter in the black costume, which A leads wow. to some really cool character stuff. And B, some yeah. really cool combat abilities, which was like my one thing when Miles Morales came out, I was like, okay, the original Spider-Man was amazing. Miles Morales is even better because the combat is a little bit more uh, dynamic because you have more abilities. And now they're giving Peter more abilities. So you get that ex extra dynamic but, combat. But we also, it's going to be really interesting to see where that story goes because if yeah. you've read the comics, <laughs> I mean... Uh, well, they already announced that Venom is in the game. Well, yeah, 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 but but still, like, how is that all going to play out? How is the I'm symbiote? Really like, are we gonna? Is the game going to open with the symbiote suit? Like, um, I want to know if Reed Richards is going to be in it. Maybe Reed Richards is the one that helps him get out of the symbiote suit. Give yeah. us some Fantastic Four action. That'd be cool. Are we, are we gonna have carnage are we gonna have siren like i that seems like a We're stretch, not but yeah siren <laughs> hey you know what i i thought getting spider-man 2099 in media in the 2020s was a was a stretch too but here we are into the spider-verse right yeah he's in a major movie so yeah siren which comes out come back you tomorrow know? yeah i'm gonna go see it tomorrow nice yeah I don't, know when, I don't know when i'll have time to see that soon hopefully. i watched the first one last night in preparation Ooh, so I should give it a rewatch. The one thing that really, uh, this is my last thing I'll say about Spider Man, then we can move on. The one sure. thing that really kind of drew me in, there were a lot of people that were like, oh, like, I don't know, the graphics don't look like that much of an upgrade. Like, first of all, they definitely upgraded the graphics. Um, but what really, really, you have to, you have to kind of know what you're looking for in this age of gaming to see a lot of the upgrades. And when you look at what they did in that trailer, the speed at which they're moving through the city is so much faster than the previous two games. You have a, uh, Miles does this slingshot thing and zooms through the city with like glider wings. And there's another thing where he's like getting pulled across the water. He's like, you know, on a helicopter or something and like getting, getting pulled across the water super fast. That's not stuff that they could do on the previous consoles yeah. because they couldn't stream in the assets fast enough from that hard drive. The biggest bottleneck in gaming that we've now overcome is SSDs. And they are very clearly taking advantage of that technology in this new game. And I'm really excited to see it because that is just, I mean, texture popping is going to be hopefully a thing of the past, right? You have all this new stuff you can do that you couldn't do before when you were just limited at how quickly you could move through the city. It's welcome, sweet. Welcome to our Spider-Man podcast. Um, yeah, I also just loved how they kind of uh, defined the way that Miles uses web a little bit differently than Peter Parker, right? He's throwing yeah. out little lines that he's been walking across, right? He's, like you said, launching himself. That was cool. He's, he's, do, he's using his ability way different than Peter does, which helps define him as, like, you know, being different, which is nice. So, to be fair, I'm not. I, it's not clear whether that's stuff that you can also do as Peter. Um, I took that as just like, oh, these are new mechanics they've added to the game for both Spider-Men. I, I would assume it's not. I hope it's not. I want them to feel distinctly different. I can. I think that's good for be gameplay cool. wise because, like, you know, you have these two different characters and they're 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 the play a little bit differently, and you have to approach situations a little bit differently as these two characters. Uh, right. But we'll see. I, think, we'll I see. think even if certain abilities are granted to both of them, you will still have enough separation, especially in combat, because of Miles' ability. Yeah, I know. Of the black suit. That... But but I think I think you know having more distinct yeah, we'll things see. that that that's just kind of like the way Miles does stuff versus the way Peter does stuff. I'm, could be yeah. cool. But um, I can't wait for this game to come to PC and like. Yeah, you're gonna be waiting a while. I'm gonna be playing it on my PS5 like a heathen, and then playing it again on my PC when it drops. Um, I'm waiting for PC because I am a PC gamer. Yeah, you're smart. You're smart. But I, I finally gave in on on uh, wanting to play these exclusives. But it's it's great to see that these exclusives are starting to come to PC. And another one that's on the way is Ratchet & Clank is finally coming yes. to the PC in August, I think. July, they said. I believe. July, okay. Soon. I, I knew it was July. soon. Yeah. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, July is, I think you're right. Um, But... I I'm July not 26th. a fan of of that series, um. But my my brother is like was always absolutely in love with it. It's just I never cared for it myself. So, um, 
I could take it or leave it, but hey, I'm sure plenty of people are stoked. I've never had a chance to play it. I heard Rift Apart was great, and I think it's gonna. This is gonna. That be was a PS5 a launch really title, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a really good game for the ally. I think like a a platformer like that is like, yeah, perfect type of game for bringing on a handheld. That's true, um, and it should run quite well on it, given the, the they posted the minimum and recommended specs, um, and it's it looks like it's gonna be a good one. I'm actually pretty excited to check it out. Sweet. Fine. Uh, let's actually let's move this to the bottom. Um, Knights of the. I had to put this news in here because we've talked about this. Knights uh, this of the is, Old this, Republic. Yeah. Go ahead. Knights of the Old Republic. The Knights of the Old Republic remake that like has kind of gone through some development changes and like we've heard some stuff and it's been kind of up in the air. Um, there is uh, Embracer Group released its full year report for the the past year for april 2022 through march 2023 and they said that the knights of the old republic remake is still under active development and it is coming to pc which is all i needed to hear right now i pretty just much, want that game so bad yeah pretty much the best gaming news i've heard in a while honestly um because i've <laughs> never like the tiniest piece of news too it is it is it is and i've never played those games and they haven't aged well and i'm a star wars fan like none other but I for was I was too busy competing in, in tournaments and stuff like when that game dropped. That was just living a different life. I played World of Warcraft and Smash I mean, Brothers same. and nothing else. I think I was playing right. World of Warcraft almost exclusively. Yeah, I didn't time. play That's other right. games for the for like this like four year gap. I played WoW and, yeah. and, and Melee and that was it. Same. Um, I, I played a part of Knights of the Old Republic like much later, like a couple of years ago. And you're right, it's it's a little bit tougher to play now. Mm. And then when I heard there was a remake, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna wait for that." Yeah, because I just I want to experience the story. I, I want, yeah, I want the, the story. story and, I know the twist. And oh, stuff, I don't, but... I don't know anything. But yeah, I'm really pumped. I just want to like cool. take a step back to the PlayStation Showcase a little bit and and actually highlight um, Final Fantasy 16. I'm I've been really critical on Final Fantasy games for a while. Um, I really did not like a realm. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. I just, I just didn't like the overacting and you know how I animated like the, the characters on were. <laughs> I think I am in the minority because I absolutely love Seven Story, but I, I didn't, I didn't enjoy the game. It just like all the overacting and stuff, and a lot of the side quests and stuff just felt like filler, and I just didn't enjoy. Well, it was it. long. Because it was yeah. just the first like third of the story. Yeah, right? I just I it just felt muddled down and weak to me. Other people, you know, Ronald, he's always in chat, felt like, oh, this is, they're just giving me more of this thing I already love. But you know, um, if you're a fan of JRPGs, at some point, like the game, those games are already so long. Like, what's a bunch more? Like, well, you have to kind of enjoy the 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 side quest filler stuff in order to play a JRPG in the first place. But. I think it's just like tonally and stuff. They like really kind of made it feel like cutesier and stuff. And I that, that game is pretty dark, like tonally, like the actual original game. Um, a lot of really messed up things happen. And um, Final Fantasy 16, they showed off the trailer and I, I watched it reluctantly. I'm like, I know I'm not going to care about this Square. I don't love Square anymore. Holy crap. It looks amazing. I cannot wait for that game. It looks so good. It looks so good. So I will be picking up Final Fantasy 16 like as and soon as I can. His words. Yeah. Oh, dude, they're they're getting my money. I will play that game, and I'm very excited for it. And it might even get me to buy Part Two of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I was gonna say, it, have they announced Part Two of the Final Fantasy VII Remake? Do we know when it's coming? I, I don't know if it has a date yet, but um, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it's like this holiday. Honestly, like the end of the year. I've actually never played a Final Fantasy game. I'm not gonna lie. Interesting. Yeah. Um. I've got like a bajillion hours in Final Fantasy XI, which is the first MMO. Um, oh, okay. So I'm like, you know, I've played I've played almost every Final Fantasy game except for the last two. I think I just didn't like played them. like all the all the old like NES ones and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Game Boy, yeah. you name it. Um, multiple they re released some of them on like Game Boy and right, right. Um, yeah, so right. I've played almost I've played almost all of them. Um, I used to love JRPGs. Now I'm a, I'm a much harder sell on them. But anyways, same. Um, I actually did used to like them a lot, which is why it's weird that I never played one as a kid when I was like really into. I love I played Chrono Trigger and and Super Mario RPG and like a bunch of these other. I just never tried Final Fantasy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it was around that time when they switched to PlayStation is when I started getting into those games and I never owned a PS One. I mean, we're reading you, chat, but you guys are asking a lot of, like, random questions about products that we can't 
answer a lot of these questions. People asking for prices and stuff like um, we can't. We, we don't we have don't, prices. We don't have availability, and we can't comment on products that don't exist and or haven't been announced. Which yep. is some of the most common questions that we get. When are you going to make this thing? When are you going to make this thing? I yeah. don't know. I mean, maybe just, it's being worked on. Maybe it's not. Can't say it if we haven't announced it. That's what announcing is. So. Um, but yep. Anyways, uh, what else is this? We have a new Warhammer Forty K game. Yeah, I, I just thought this was cool because it looks like Mad Max with orcs in space. It's called Warhammer 40k Speed Freaks. It looks kind of awesome. I didn't actually. Uh, we can pull this one up on stream. Well, this is this is one worth pulling up. Okay, all right. But what is the actual like, genre? What gameplay is this? Is it like no. You, you don't even know? Oh, okay. It's Battle Cars. What was the name of that game? Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Power Battle Cars? I think I'm thinking of Twisted Metal, but... Um, <laughs> Supersonic anyways. Acrobatic Rocket Power Battle Cars was, was the original Rocket League. It was the game that they made before they made Rocket League. I see. I mean, I mean do you not know the history of Rocket League? It's actually No, I know nothing about Rocket League, but... Okay. Well, I think Twisted Metal all, predates that. You should so. play more Rocket League because it's amazing. But yeah, yeah. It's, this looks ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. It's like, you know, you play you play Halo, and your favorite part is driving around in a warthog, and this is just the whole game of you. that. <laughs> but with orcs, like, like, I, can we just talk about how many freaking Warhammer 40k games are out? Like, how did this happen? And where were all of these when I was playing Warhammer tabletop like 20 years ago? And was like would have like just bought all of these games sight unseen in a heartbeat. Yeah, it's there's just so many, and it's like they're all so there's different. So many, I know they've really just like run the gamut in terms of genres and styles and all like, kinds of stuff. I've it's been really playing interesting Bolt Gun, which is you know Boomer Shooter. It's like old school, you know Wolfenstein like or Doom, and it's a lot of fun. But Wolfenstein, um, Wolfenstein, whatever, Wolfenstein. So, okay, that's all the gaming news. I just had to get those last two things in there because I thought they were so cool. Um, the last thing I'll mention is that, guys, remember the Xbox showcase is not this weekend, but next weekend. So be sure to check that out. I'm really excited to see what kind of games they announced. They're going to do a deep dive on Starfield, which I am super looking forward to. Mm. And on Sunday, I will actually be at Xbox Fan Fest uh, doing a segment with them on my ROG Ally. So tune into that. I'll be driving up to LA. Um, oh, you are going there live. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. You guys will have to, uh, have to check it out. Um, Very cool. Yeah. And then, uh, and then next week, are we doing an ally teardown next week? Is that still the goal? We got to lock that in. Assuming Sasha shows up. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. We'll mess. We'll message Sasha and we'll, we'll, we'll try and get it scheduled guys. Oh, we scheduled it, but I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Join our discord exclamation point discord and chat. That is where you can find all the latest news about what we are going to be streaming. That is where you can ask all of your questions about the ROG ally, uh, and all other kinds of things. Um, so check out the discord, uh, the official Asus ROG discord. And uh, yeah, tune in next week. We'll probably, you know what? If Sasha's not here, I'll tear down my ally. I don't care. We'll be tearing down an ally next week on stream. Tell wow. you now. Uh, he just wants to yeah. rip it apart. All right. Well, we Thank are going to do a giveaway. Um, so if oh, yeah. if you guys want to take part in the giveaway, you have to be in Twitch chat and you have to type exclamation mark play because we use marbles on stream, which just plugs into Twitch. So twitch.tv slash Asus RG. I'll type it in uh, YouTube chat. Uh, okay, going to get the session going in just a second here. We're giving away a twenty dollars voucher to GamesPlanet.com. We'll give away two, first and last place. Why not? Yeah, yeah. This one has a ninety-one percent elimination rate. Beautiful. Marbles. No pulse. XPL says, "What if only one person finishes? Then it's Marbles Thunderdome. Hundred marbles enter. 
one marble leaves. I guess we'll find out. Then only one winner. That's it. All right. Exclamation mark play to join in Twitch chat. Give you another 20 seconds or so. Ten seconds till I hit that play button. All right, here we go. Dude, this is this is a map. This is a yeah, special map. This is a good map. We started favoriting like the craziest ones. Oh, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> So Lucky and I are like slowly compiling this grand list of ridiculous maps. Nice. Nice. All right. First and last place wins. If only one person finishes, well, they've won one, one key. One person wins. <laughs> you could spend it on your first game for the ROG ally. That's true. Who's this guy? It's the gingerbread man. What kind of Pokemon is that? What kind of Pokemon are you? I still have that cassette tape. To be a master. To be a master. Classic. A classic among cassette tapes. It's the only cassette I still have. I kept it for the that sentimental is... value. I think I had it on CD. Not a true I fan. A, I was a baller. <laughs> <laughs> I was a true fan of digital music. I hated my portable CD player because it always skipped. Dude. Yeah, it was the worst. Uh, even the one that I I had one that had anti-skip supposedly, but like a few months into its life, if I, it would it, the anti-skip would just like run out way too quickly, and if yeah. it skipped once, the entire CD would stop and get and you would have scratched. To start it over. Oh, you would God, have it to was start it over from the beginning. I couldn't skip tracks. You had oh. to start listening from the beginning, and if it skipped, you were done. You had to start over. It was like worse than a cassette oh. tape. Yeah, because oh. cassette tapes were superior in every way. No, they were not. I don't actually just know. Just... Oh, here's the end. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> yeah. What? There Even... they go. <laughs> oh, bye, guys. Y'all are gone. Oh, Supernator's in. All right, we got one. We got one. Supernator. Oh, we got a few. All right. Genie in a jacket is currently the last place, but... Yuizen has a chance. Private Wings, oh. good point. If anyone is seeing the Spider-Man movie this weekend, no spoilers in chat. No spoilers. We'll all ban you for our life. Um, yeah. Supernator and, and, and Genie type in chat to claim. Or we got Supernator. And oh my gosh, we only got four people made it. We got Genie. Yeah, I chose one that had a 97% or 91% elimination rate. That's that's Yeah, that sounds about right. Sweet. Well, guys, congratulations. We'll send you a whisper next week. It'll be on Wednesday because I'm actually off on Monday, Tuesday uh, next week. So you will not get a whisper before Wednesday. But. Oh, Jake's gone. I'm going to take over the stream and just stream like the silliest stuff. You just, just going to play fall, guys. Let's be real. I'm just going to let marbles like run on auto and leave the room. <laughs> You'll be watching up, marbles for three you hours. You can set up like a. Uh, what do you like a grand prix and have like multiple races queued up but you have to start each one individually right so yeah at least have to be no nope. i want to be able to just walk away like eat my lunch while a bunch of people are just watching nothing happen on stream i'm nice. gonna put like a, a scarecrow in my chair that looks like me you mean all scarecrow got him well guys got him Thanks for hanging out today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be we'll be back tomorrow with like an extra long stream. I'm probably going to start around 1 p.m. Eastern. That's the goal to play five hours of Diablo 4 in a variety of scenarios. So see you then on Twitch.tv slash ASUS ROG. GG's. Take care. See ya.